Good morning and happy Easter. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. Today, we celebrate Easter Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord. Our celebrant is Father Gabriel Altamirana Ortega. Please rise and join the choir in singing the entrance hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this very special day, the first Sunday we celebrate, the day of the Lord, in which the community knew that he was not only alive, but the source of life for us. Now, we celebrate with joy the Lord with us, life with us. And we will receive now the holy water as a sign of our baptism and remember the new life of Jesus of Nazareth belongs to each one of us. He has taken us, united us to him, and we are with him. Please join the choir in singing the hymn, Water of Life.
let us pray O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, which can be found on page 176 in the Holy Week Missal Booklet. Here, we hear a part of an early sermon from Peter. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea? Beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people that testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is Psalm 118. The response is, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, let us rejoice, let us rejoice and be glad. to the Lord who is good, for God's love endures forever. Let the family of Israel sing, God's love endures forever. Stone which the builders reach. 
rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians, which can be found on page 177 in the Holy Week Missal Booklet. Here, we learn that through our baptism, we already share in the risen life of Christ, though in a hidden and mysterious way. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, Seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Easter sequence, which can be found on page 178. Christians praise the Paschal Victor, offer thankful sacrifice. Christ the Lamb has saved the sheep, Christ the Just One paid the price. Reconciling sinners to the Father. Death and life fought bitterly for this wondrous victory. The Lord of life who died reigns glorified. O Mary, come and sing. You saw at break of day the empty tomb of my living Lord. I saw Christ Jesus risen and adored. Bright angels testified, shroud and grave clothes side by side. Yes, Christ, my hope, rose gloriously. He goes before you into Galilee. Share the good news, sing joyfully. His death is victory. Lord Jesus, victor king, show us mercy. stand for the gospel acclamation. Christ, our Pascal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us then feast with joy in the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Madeleine came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she went and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple ran ran out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the buried coast there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the buried coast there and the clothes that have covered his head, not with the buried clothes, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Again, Happy Easter. And Happy Easter means the resurrected one is with you with each one of you. These are the good news that today we celebrate. We will follow the readings we have just heard to understand our celebration, to join with, from our hearts this special celebration. It was the first day of the week. That means It was the first day of a new creation. On the outer world, in Jerusalem, very few people will know the meaning of that first day. And we follow these few people, those described in today's gospel. Because only they, on that day, were able to start believing and understanding what had happened. Something that was not just related to Jesus of Nazareth, but was related to them. As we go in the description of the gospel, I will invite you to reflect on what is happening now here in this community. So. It was early in the day. And the first one that went to the tomb was Mary of Magdalene. She had been, when Jesus was on the cross, she has been there looking at him. And now she's looking for the body of Jesus. So she goes to the tomb And the only thing she sees is the tomb empty, in the sense that the stone has been removed. She didn't go inside, she didn't look at anything, just saw the tomb open, and she ran. She's the first one who starts running on that day, and goes to Peter. There are two disciples described there. One is Peter, the same Peter who had denied the Lord, 
And the other one is the disciple who Jesus loved, without name. Why? Because it is not a concrete disciple. It is every true believer. The true believer will go through this process of faith. So they both at once start running. The true believer arrives first and looks from outside but waits for Peter. Then Peter comes and goes inside the tomb and he remains puzzled. He cannot understand. He's looking at the empty tomb. He's looking at the burial clothes, but in order. And he starts reflecting. What happened here? He cannot understand. He's not waiting for Jesus to be resurrected, not at all. He wants to understand the empty tomb and the burial clothes in order there. Then at last, the true disciple comes into the tomb, sees the same things that Peter saw, and he starts to believe. Now, we take this scene to our community here. Just imagine someone coming at this very moment from the main door and looking at us here, united, listening. He will see a lot of people, many families. He will see us listening attentively to the word of the Lord. But that's all he will see. Then maybe he will start thinking, what's going on here? This order within this special place. What is going on? What is happening there? That person will start, like Peter, being puzzled and trying to understand, but not being able to understand. Only when a believer comes from that door, the believer will see with his or her heart and will know that there are not only we here listening, that there is someone alive in our midst that today has called us to come and be with him. He or she will start believing, looking from the heart, from a believing heart. That's what is described in today's gospel. And that was the beginning of a believing community of those who from that day until now have tried to receive Jesus as the source of life and to follow him. Now, with this in our mind, we look at what happened in the first reading, the same Peter that now understands the scripture, not only for himself, he is able to explain the scripture to others. And very clearly, you see the message there in the first reading, Jesus of Nazareth, the one who called me to follow him, he was filled with the spirit and the power of God. He went all over doing good, answering people's need. And the authorities put him to death on the cross. But God raised him from the dead. Peter understanding, looking now with his heart at everything that happened in Galilee and the way to Jerusalem and the death of Jesus on the cross with the heart. When he was just looking with his eyes, he was not able to follow the Lord, he denied him. Now he becomes a witness, a clear witness, and explains to others, this Jesus of Nazareth is now the source of life and is the judge of all living creatures. Just one word, 
regarding this being the judge. Peter is saying, if you look at him with your heart and you believe in him, then you will follow him by the path of life. His life, his new life belongs to you. But if you do not accept him, if you reject him, then you will deny yourself the chance to accept true life. Being the judge is being there. He's inviting us to accept him and then waiting for an answer. One last word. In the second reading, St. Paul explains through baptism, we are united to the one who is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Now, remember, if you look with the heart, you look at the community, you look at those who believe that they are sitting at the right hand of the Father in the resurrected Lord Jesus. Now, here, as someone in gestation, someone that is growing, then we will be in fullness, enjoying the life of the eternal God. Let us celebrate. This is the good news. We are united to the resurrected one. All the signs we see, the water at the beginning, this special candle, the sign of the resurrected Lord, just remind us of something real. Is he who is here? Is he who is inviting us? Is he who is with us inviting us to follow him? Let us now remain in silence and give thanks to the Lord for this day, the beginning of the new creation, the day of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand for the renewal of baptismal promises, which can be found on page 166 in the Holy Week Missal Booklet. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so, I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Yes. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Christ, the morning star, crucified and raised from the dead, now sheds his peaceful light on the world. Let us pray to him with confidence for all our needs. Our response for today's general intercessions is, 
Lord of glory, hear our prayer. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. That the Lord's light might shine on his followers and inflame them with new hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. That his light may shine on world leaders, encouraging them in their search for justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. That his light may shine on the sad and the lonely, the sick and the troubled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. That his light may shine on those who are grieving the loss of a loved one and sh scatter the shadows of death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. That his light may shine on all gathered here, confirming our faith and strengthening our hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. That the radiance of eternity may shine on our deceased relatives and friends, and all the faithful departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. We now pause to pray for our own special needs this Easter day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of glory, hear our prayer. God of power and love, through the resurrection of your Son, you have kindled in our hearts the hope of eternal life. Guard this hope with your grace and bring it to fulfillment in the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Please join the choir in singing the offertory hymn, Thine is the glory.
please rise. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with Paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the you call, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time, he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Sir Francis, our Pope, and uh, Cardinal Stephen Chow, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is you, Almighty Father, forever and We are seated at the right hand of the Father. We are children of God because of Jesus' death and resurrection. Now, following his instructions, let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Alleluia. Therefore, let us keep the feast with the unleavened bread of purity and truth. Alleluia, alleluia. Today's communion hymns are The Day of Resurrection and Regina Celli.
Please rise. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Children are now invited to come up for blessings by the priests. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended, hallelujah, hallelujah.
please join the choir in singing our recessional hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia.